Hey there, is today your first time here? Or maybe your first time in a while? If so, maybe you're wondering exactly who we are and what this church is all about. Well, we'd like you to know that we're a group of ordinary people who are on an amazing journey together, following Christ. Our guide is the Bible because it's the divinely inspired Word of God and it will never take us in the wrong direction. Along the way, we hope you'll see that we are welcoming and spiritually passionate and that getting to know you is a big deal to us. We know that the road is rough sometimes, but we'll work really hard to bring you practical and relevant messages to equip and encourage you through life's ups and downs. We want you to know that we care about this community and we believe that it's our job to make it a better place. So no matter who you are or where you've been, we're glad you're here with us today. And we hope that you'll join us on our journey, following Christ and living out His plan for us. So welcome to church. of the month of stepping into the miraculous. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Whatever you're watching us from, we appreciate you. Keep keeping on with us. And our God will keep doing you well. If you're anywhere around us, come to the total ground and see what God is doing in our lives. Be the particulars of this grace. I present to you this morning. The most beautiful, the most handsome, the most Sunday, our God is waiting for us to usher us in to the miraculous. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Come with me this morning to the book of Second Kings, Second Kings chapter five. As we start to read the word and make the word, Hallelujah! I'm excited. Amen. Reading second chapter five, verse one to three. Then we will skip go to eight, down to fourteen. Now, so we read together in unison. You can look at the screen, also, or you read from the scripture. Can we read together? Where to go? Now, Naaman, the king of the host, the king of Syria, was a great man with his master. And honorable, because by him the Lord had given the deliverance of Syria. He was a mighty man, but he was a leper too. And the Syria has gone out and accompanied us, and has brought away the captives out of the land of Israel. A little man, and she waited on the man's wife. Three, and she said unto her mistress. Number eight, let's jump to eight. And it was so when Elisha had the man of God, that had the king of Israel, as rent his clothes, that he said to the king, saying, I said, you hold, I thought, 
solution. They are looking for somebody to help them resolve them. The needy here was a man called a mighty man of valor. A great captain, a military officer by name, Neyman. He was mightily used and respected in his community and in his country. He was a military officer. But unfortunately there was a need in his life. No matter the stage you have gone in life, there is always something that is challenging you to go over to the other side. Neymar is a popular man because he is skillful. He has done great things for his people. But the Bible tells us that he has a need that Money cannot be able to help him. You know, people are living with different kinds of ailments and sicknesses and diseases. The man was one of them. The Bible said he was a leper. Imagine a great man, a mighty man, a rich man. His toes begin to go off. He can no longer eat with his fingers. He can no longer wear his shoes. It's a disgracing sickness. And he was, he started to get.
get constrained. He started to exempt himself in some social programs. He started withdrawing. And the Bible said there was a maid. There was a maid who was very observant to see that Papa is no longer happy as he used to be. Papa is no longer socializing as she used to socialize. I've told you in this church that we must look after the, our helpers because our helpers has the ability to make us or to destroy us. The people we call the minors in the society has influence. Our life after God sometimes is in their hands. Our drivers, our cleaners, our security men, those people we call non-entity, they have a lot of power. They have a lot of power. It's like a man who is always constantly having problems with his wife. And you are saying to your wife, there's nothing he can do. That woman can do a lot of things. In fact, they can do more than you thought. So let us always give people their respect and their honor. Because all lives are important. Everybody is important. Everybody is very, very important. The Bible said there was a maid, but this maid was a maid that has a message. This maid was in our Sunday school. This small girl has been taught in our Sunday school. By the way, our children are going to present on the 2nd of October. They say Jesus hears prayers. This young lady was told that Jesus hears prayers. This young girl was told that Jesus can heal. This young girl was told that there is no mountain that we cannot climb. And even in her situation, she was away from home. When the Israelites has a problem with these people, they came and took them captives. And she was among the little girls that was captured to their foreign land. And the Bible said in the foreign land, she was having I was serving as a housemaid, a helper, a cleaner, a cook, the madame of the big man. That was where she was serving, helping, cleaning the house. And she took note that there was a problem in that house. The Bible said she went to her mistress and madam and said, Mommy, madam, I got something I want to tell you. Even though there is bad news in this home, I have noticed it. I know that things are not going as it used to go. But I have a message for you. There is a God where I am coming from. Amen. There is a God where I am coming from. Amen. He is a God of Israel. If my master can only go to the land of Israel, all he needs to do is to go to the land of Israel. Once he go to the land of Israel, there is a man of God in that place. The leprosy of my master will disappear. Amen. And even though we have seen God doing miracles in our midst, but how many of us are sharing the testimonies of what God is doing? How many of us are in position to say like this little girl, come to our church, our God will heal you. Come to our church. Our God will answer your prayers. Come to our church. Our God will do what He said He will do. A little housemaid. Have a message. If only my master can come to Israel. The God of Israel will heal her. Most of the time, when we leave the church, instead of us to talk good of our church, we gossip our church. We tell everything wrong about our church. We tell how the pastor is not so eloquent. We tell how the pastor's wife is doing this or that. How our women leader, our, our youth, our this, our that. We did. Like the Bible say a, a wise person build his own house. Then a fool tear his own house with his own hand. After you have told me how bad your church is, tomorrow you are inviting me to come to church. In fact, you won't be able to invite me. Because already you have sold the church to me. Must we dwell on the negativity? Can't we see what God is doing? 
There are healings that took place. There are miracles that took place. People have been delivered. Miracles have been done. Barren women are having children. Healings are taking place. Why don't you think of this? As, the Bible says whatever that is pure, whatever is of good report. If there be praise, if there be joy among you, he said, think of all these things. Amen. We live in a time when people don't think of the goodness of the Lord. They don't think of the miracles God is doing. What they think, have you heard? Do you know? Did you see? The last somebody right there was saying that I was preaching up. And I said, oh my God. Preaching that I started at a, a, a very old age. When God said, come and start at the age of 13. I refused. I did not come. So the messages that are piling that should have been preaching for a long time. I'm preaching backward, back, back lock. And somebody said, no, the person was preaching me, he was talking about me. That was a message. How do you expect somebody to come to the church where a pastor talk about his members? This young girl says, if only my master can come, there is God in our land. There is God in our church. The God of our church, the God of total restoration, will restore our master completely. Amen. Amen. Step into the miracles. Nehemiah needs to step out from his comfort zone. Nehemiah must take action. He must step out from what he calls comfort, even though it's uncomfortable zone. You know, a lot of people fake it. They fake the laugh. They fake everything. They fake the car. They fake the houses. They fake everything around them. They even fake their marriage. How many times have you heard of the celebrities? Their marriage has passed since. Because of what the people will say. They say, let, let us just stay. Let us just stay so that the people will not know we are not married. When you get close, you discover that their marriage has passed many, many years ago. The man was living a fantasy. Even though he comes and they salute him and give him all the military recognition, he knows within him something is wrong. But that young girl said, you need to step out, Neman. Where you are is not comfortable. Even though you pretend that it is comfortable. I have a message for somebody this morning. Amen. That our God have the answer. Amen. Our God is able. Amen. He is abundantly able. Amen. To do beyond that. Even with you have imagined. Or think. He is a living God. He is able. If only you can take this step of faith. You will see him. Coming down on your behalf. You will see him healing your secrets. You will see him delivering you. You will see him making we call him a way maker. There is nothing he cannot do. He is the Lord God Almighty. He is the God of all flesh. I'm here to challenge you today. I do not know where or what has been happening to you. Take a step of faith. The man has to leave his community. He has to leave his village and his country to go to another country. A country they hated. A country they raided. A country. The majority of their people are slaves in their own land. The king of Israel was ignorant. And that's what happened to many of us. We do not count the blessings of God. We do not record the miracle God is doing in our midst. We do not tell people about the goodness of our God. Immediately this king heard that <laughs> as a man on his door who came for healing. The Bible says he was cross and began to cry. And one of the signs the Israelites do when they are cross and they are crying is that they will tear their cloth. The king tore his cloth and began to cry like a child. Ooh, 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 ooh. You know when we are children, when we are crying and we are getting tired, we are watching you. We are, we, are, we are monitoring you so that you can tell us sorry for the last time. When we see you coming, we change the gear again to use another gear to cry the cry. So no, no, no. The, the, the king was using different uh, 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 tools to cry the cry. Uh, uh, uh. When we start getting tired, we begin to hold it. We are just waiting for somebody to tell us to stop. And one of the stupidity of being a child is that we'll be waiting to say no. I will cry the last cry. When they tell me, sorry, the last one, I will stop. 
They were waiting for the last one. When the last one comes up, we move it again. No, they they cry the last one. We will cry the last one until nobody's there will find ourselves sleeping by the corner. You know, we're there and we're waiting for the, the person who will come and tell us to cry the last one. I know many of you did it. And some of you are still doing it. Especially our wives. Then we beg they say, leave me alone. And so she can say, beg again. Beg again. Uh, she went to be printed. I will not agree. She has already agreed. She just wanted to paint her small. And you will see her rejoicing. Hallelujah. Amen. The king was crying. A serious cry. <laughs> and the, the message go to the man of God that our king is crying. He said, why is he crying? He said, somebody came with a problem. Because he does not know the God that is in Israel. Child of God, what you don't value, you lose it. You don't know the grace you have. The Bible says the grace of God has appeared to all of us. You don't know the anointing that is in your life. You don't know until you pray. You don't know until you lay hand. You don't know until you speak the word. Hallelujah. Speak the word. You are not the one that confirms the word. It is God that confirms the word. If God does not want to confirm the word, it's none of your business. Just speak the word. For I know he said, I honor my word even more than my name. God said, I'm standing behind my word to bring it to pass. Hallelujah. Just speak the word. He said to the children of Israel, as I have spoken to my ears, even so will I do unto you. Many of you are dumb when you go to God. Instead of speaking, you are there crying. You are there complaining. You are there saying one thing or the other. God says, speak the word. Look at that military officer. When Jesus wanted to go to his house, he said, children, he said, come and hear my daughter for, for my servant, for my, the situation is so bad. He said, okay, I'm coming. And Jesus was, he said, no, 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 don't come, master. I am not worthy for you to come to my house. He said, just speak a word. Amen. He said, I'm a man of authority. I said to one servant, come, he come. I said to the other one, go, he go. They don't challenge me. Master, I know you, you are a man of authority. Just speak a word. Don't come to my house. I don't have what it takes to have you in my house. I am a sinner. I'm not worthy. Just speak a word. And Jesus said, I have never seen this kind of faith in Israel. Jesus spoke a word and said, Your daughter is made whole. The Bible said, He said, Thank you to Jesus. And when they got home, the daughter ran out. Daddy, 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 daddy. The daughter that was lying there. The Bible said, He took a proper inventory. He asked them, what time did this gear condition change? And the Bible said, it was the exact time when Jesus said to him, go, your daughter has been made home. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Elijah has the word of God with him. He said to him, but when the man called the man came, he came with his pride. The Bible said with all his military gadgets, he stood on the door of the house of man. Pride came before the social and the haughty spirit before a fall. Many people God has put in your life to bless you because of your arrogance, because of your pride, because of a whole me. You have missed your mark. I pray in this moment of miracles, you will never miss your blessing. Amen. You will never miss your blessing. Amen. In the name of Jesus, he came so arrogant, so pompous. The big guy, he knew he has a problem. He stood and they were giving him military salute in another man's compound. And the Bible says, Elijah sent a messenger. Tell him to go to River Jordan and wash seven times and he will be made whole. The Bible said, the man said, what an insult. What an insult. Did you tell him, did you, did you introduce, did you take my complimentary card? Maybe you did not. My friend, when you have a problem, you have a problem. When you have a problem, humble yourself. Many of you would have gone higher in life but because of a hold me. And I've told you that a hole is something that is empty, that makes a lot of noise. So it's only rare. So when you even say a hold me, you are saying a whole stupid like me. 
from out of your stupidity, humble yourself and get your blessings. The man stood there and said, hey, hold me, Captain, Major General. Does he know how military infantry, they begin to speak all those grammars. Grammar cannot help you sometimes. You need to humble yourself. You need to humble yourself. And the Bible said that after he has blew all the grammar, he said the worst thing that arrogant people always say. He said, does he know the river that is in Damascus? If you have a river in Damascus, what are you looking for in Jordan? Does he know how good those waters are? Why didn't he tell me since he has a problem, he wants me to bat? Did I tell him that I'm smelling? Did I tell him I've never bat? What has water to do with leprosy? How can water clean leprosy? He began to blow grammar. Blow grammar. Many of you would have gotten far in life if you have learned to humble yourself and learn from another. The Bible said, and Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' servant. I begin to ask God, why should the Bible call Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' servant? After all, he was the next person to take over leadership. You need somebody to teach you so that you will be able to occupy that position. Amen. That is what you need in life. You don't need to think that you can fly anywhere. No, you have to start somewhere. somewhere. You have to be a good follower for people to follow you. Amen. God said, yes, Joshua has to be the servant of Moses before he can be my servant. But many of us, we don't want to learn from anybody. We know it all. We understand it all. We, we can explain everything all. And I will say that he was wrought. And he said, I thought he will come out. And call on his God. Not only calling on his God, he will lay his hand upon me. You know, many of you, when we say to you, go and be healed, go and be delivered, go and prosper. He said, Pastor, is that all you're saying? You did not bless the water. You did not place the oil. You did not put handkerchief. You did not push me down. <laughs> One of my father said, how many times have you fallen? When you wake up, there's no difference. <laughs> Can't you talk to yourself? This falling is not necessary sometimes. If the Spirit of God wants to fall you down, let the Spirit of God fall you down. Amen. It is not the falling. It is the power that is making it. God has anointed Jesus Christ with Holy Ghost and power. Who went about doing good, healing no manner of sicknesses and diseases, and setting the captives free. For God is with him. He was not pushing people down. To one, he put a spit on the ground, turned it to a mud, put a sign on a man who has an eye problem, and he asked him, go and wash, and you'll be made whole. I would have said like that man, what is the meaning of this nonsense? You want to blind the eyes more? <laughs> but I would say he obeyed. When he went and washed, he came back. And they asked him, he said, Jesus, he said to me, go and wash. I went and wash. I came to see him. They said to him, that man is a sinner. He said, whether he's a sinner or not a sinner, one thing I know is that once I was blind, but now I can see. with his grammar. The Bible says he was wrought. He turned away from his miracle. I pray for every one of us that we will not turn away from God's blessing over our life. Amen. We will not turn away from the miracle of God upon our life. The Bible says that we are coming to John the Baptist. And John the Baptist was a very bad preacher that many of you cannot withstand this day. People who came to church, he was calling them serpent. He said serpent. People don't run to look where the serpent is. They say, no, 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 you're the one I'm calling serpent. He said, Master, why are you calling us serpent? He said, you are a wicked generation. He said, what do we do? He said, repent. Stop those things you are doing. Restore what you have stolen from people. Steal no more. And then you can receive baptism that will change your life. 
We need to tell you the truth because it's only the truth that can set you free. Amen. Don't wait for us to entertain you to make you feel good. We are not calling you to make you feel good. Hallelujah. We are calling you to give you the word of God Amen. because in them we have life and we know Amen. that the word of God can change any situation. Amen. Can change any situation. Amen. There is nothing that our God cannot do. As a man told to walk away, the servant came to him. Blessed are those of you who are people who can tell you how much your mouth is smelling. Many of you don't know your mouth smells, even naturally. But if you have a good partner, if you have a good son, a good daughter in the house, he will tell you, Mommy, your mouth is smelling. Have you brushed today? It's better you are told in the house, you go and clean the mouth, than you carry the bad order. And, the spirit, and when you are talking to people, they are removing their face. <laughs> yes, we had you. You can't talk. I'm, I'm hearing you. I'm hearing you. Because your mouth is offensive. That is how many of us, our words, our lives are not pleasing. And we don't go to people who will tell us the truth. We go to people who will tell Why did he talk to me like that? Are you the only one there? This man is looking down on you. This your boss is a bad boss. And when you finish, you were full with proud. You thought that you have been given a credit. The servant of Naaman came to him and said, Papa, wait, wait. So where are you going? He said, I'm going back with my problem. Let me go and die. He said, no, 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 no. You don't need to go and die, Daddy. You don't need to go and die. What if, as a man of God said, he didn't even charge you money. He just said, go, wash, be clean. He said to him, if he has asked you to do something big, won't you do it? He said, I would have done it. He said, why are you forgetting this small thing he has asked you to do? How do I know? Nehemiah would have done big things. The Bible said that even after that miracle, he was given the man of God a gift. No, it must be that scripture that Peter said to that man, you cannot buy the gift of God with money. And that was why he was thinking that uh, uh, Elisha was a hungry pastor so that he can bribe God. And then he would go tomorrow and say, I paid so some amount of money. That was why I was healed. Every man knows how God lives him. But I don't believe that you need to buy oil before you are healed. I don't believe you need to buy handkerchief before you are healed. Amen. I don't believe you need to buy water before you are healed. Amen. But if the man of God is laid to lay a oh, hand of anointed oil on you, if it's laid to put handkerchief on you, if it's laid to give you water, there's nothing wrong. I have used water before. Hallelujah. I've used water before. I gave somebody a, a bottle of water. He drank and went his way. I never knew what happened. It was after five, seven years. He came back and said to me, I'm a bad person. I said, what did you do? He said to me, you were the first person who gave me water in South Africa. I drank that water. I left your place. Within hours, the problem I was having went away. And I said, brother, I didn't know. I can't even remember you have ever come to our church. When God leads you, yes, you can use symbols. But let us not Put people's faith away from God. Begin to put people's faith on what? Put people's faith on handkerchief. Put people's faith on oil. No, those things are the symbol of the Holy Ghost. When God says use it, use it as nothing wrong. But don't make it a method that you let people buy your handkerchief. Or let people drink your water. Or let people take your anointing oil. They won't be healed. It's not scriptural. It's not scriptural, son. With due respect. The Bible says, the servant said to him, if he has asked you to do a bigger thing, what you do? He said, I would have done. He said, then, go and do the smallest things. No wonder Corinthians said, go use the foolishness of the world to show those who think that they are clever. They don't know anything. And Bible Theologians told us that the river of Jordan was reddish. He has a lot of rubbles and dirty on it. That was why he was saying, when did I go to the one that is, uh, you know, how can I add dirty upon dirty? But it's not the water, it's the word of God. It's the word of life. The word that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are lives. I declare to you, in this month, you will see the hand of God. Amen. You will see the hand of God. Amen. You will see the 
my situation has changed. Can you tell me any further? Because you will do more than we have asked. In Jesus' name we are praying. Put your hands together for Jesus. He that comes to God must believe that God is not was, not will. God is. And he is the reward of those who diligently seek for him. And so we seek for God in this month of the miraculous. Get ready. Everything you desire from the most high God, they shall come to pass. Yeah. This is our year of satisfaction. And God has brought us for this special month to deal with every issues in our life. Keep joining us on all our platforms. And our God will do what He has said He will do. In the mighty name of Jesus. Total restoration. What you've said internationally. Restoring the dignity of the total man. Man is a spirit. He has a soul and he lives in the body. We care for our spiritual, for our physical, for our social, and for our emotional life. Keep joining us. Remain adorable. And our God will do you well. In the name of Jesus. The grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and that's with the Holy Spirit. Be with us now forevermore. Amen. Surely, all the days of our lives, we shall dwell in God's presence forever and ever. Amen. Watch what? I shall not die. Believe to declare the goodness of the Lord in the land of our living. Amen. You shall not die. Believe to declare the goodness of the Lord in the land of our living. Amen. And shall not die. Believe to declare the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Amen.